Hello and welcome to this tutorial on customizing workspaces in Adobe Premiere Pro. In the previous tutorial I showed you how to use the standard workspaces that ship with Adobe Premiere Pro, but they might not meet your needs. You might want to change the workspace a great deal more so that it meets your specific requirements. You might want certain panels open, you might want certain panels closed, and you might want to move some panels to completely different places. How do you do that and then how do you save it? Right, what we need to do is firstly understand how Premiere Pro is set up. We have frames, this here is a frame, with different panels in it. So the panels are the source panel, the effects control, the audio mixer and the metadata panel. Four different panels inside one frame. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, and in fact there's a hidden one up here, seven frames in Adobe Premiere Pro interface as it stands. Now you can get rid of bits and pieces entirely and you can move them around, but how do you do that? Let me first show you how to move a panel. I'm going to move the metadata panel just to give you an example. And I don't want it up here. Let's say I want it down here, linked in with the media browser, the info panel, the history panel, and the effects panel. In fact, let's say I don't use the media browser at all for this instance. I can close the panel and get rid of it entirely. And I might not want to use the info panel, I could close that. So now inside this frame I just have two panels and I want to move the metadata panel down to gang it or put it into this frame with the effects and the history. How do I do that? To move it you need to look for these little hash signs. Do you see these little hash signs? If you click and hold the hash and move it you start to get this very weird look. Now what's going on here? These are called drop zones. Now, if you drop something in the middle, when you've got this big purple bit in the middle, you will add it as a tab to the frame. So if I was to drop it in the middle with the program monitor and let go, I have added my metadata as a tab with the program monitor. Now, I'm going to take the metadata and I'm going to move it again. But as you notice, if I go above it, I've got a sort of a section at the top, this sort of purpley look at the top, or maybe violet, I don't really know, let go and that's going to put it above the program monitor. Let go and now I've got a new frame entirely above the program monitor. So I've got the program monitor at the bottom, metadata at the top. Don't really want that. I could, if I wanted, move it to the side of the program monitor. And so the program monitor is one side and the metadata is to the other and you get the idea. You can drop it and move it around above and below different frames and then for this particular one what I want to do is I want to drop it in the middle and now it is tabbed with these different bits and pieces. Say, however, I wanted it to become a floating window. What you do is you grab hold of the hashes or the little dots to the side of the name, pull it out and then hold the control key on the PC, the command key on the Mac, and now it becomes a standalone item. And I can let go, and there it is, a floating window. If I want to put it back and gang it again, I grab hold of the hashes or the dots beside the name, pull it to the panel I'm interested in, get the drop zone, as soon as I got that violet sort of purpley violet drop zone, let go and it's ganged. So that's how you can move panels around, you can close them and open them. However, I just want to show these ones at the top because they're slightly different. My preference for a layout, just move this back so it looks a little better, is to have these tools, not up here, but over here just beside the timeline so I don't have to always go to the top to grab hold of them. I prefer my tools not here but here so I want to move them. However when I grab hold or try and click this hashed area here you'll see that it already drops out and it becomes a floating window. Well the same rules apply as soon as it's floating I can grab it and drop it down to the side of my audio because in the right place and I can resize them however I want to do them. However I'm going to undo that for a minute. I'm going to click it and hold the control key to make it a floating panel. If I decide I want to put it back up with this line up here where I've got workspaces and I click the hash tree and move it, um, it won't go. I get a cyan line right at the top. If I let go there, well it, it puts it right at the top of everything else but it hasn't actually ganged it back up where it originally was. To do that you need to right click on it. So go to the tools area, right click and go to dock in options panel and it puts it right back there at the top. So now just watch, if I click here, it becomes a floating window and goes back to where I last had it. If I click the options bar again, where I've got this workspace area, 
that also becomes a floating window and I don't have the options bar at all at the top. And if I accidentally shut that down, so now I can no longer see the windows, I only have to get to my workspaces through here, I can actually open that again by going down to the options box, click options and it comes back up and then I grab hold of the hash, take it right to the top till I get that little cyan bar at the top and drop it in and then my tools, I can right click on the little hash area, dock in the options panel and there it is, it's back to how it was before. So let's just quickly create a new workspace. So I'm going to click on that one to undo it and I don't want it there. I want it over here. And I think um, I want all of these panels. Let's have a look. I'm not going to use Resource Central so I can get rid of Resource Central. However, I do want my Reference Monitor available because I use that quite a lot. So go Window, Reference Monitor and that's uh, an undocked panel. I could leave it floating but do you know what? I think I want it down here with my Effects, History and Metadata. So I can click and drag, take it to the middle, get the center drop zone, let go, and it's now docked. But uh, my layout would preferably be like that, so I got access to all four bits. Now that, for me, might be a fairly good layout. That might be how I want to use it on a regular basis. And I want it to always start, say, with my source panel forward, and I want it to start with my reference monitor forward. That might be the way that I want it to look. Great. How do I save it? Well. I can either, if I've got my workspace area showing here, I can either click on the drop down and go to new workspace, but let's do it through the windows menu so you know, window, workspace, new workspace, and it says what do you want to call it. So I'm going to call it Andrew's working space. And then I click OK. And then you'll see that here at the workspace, Andrew's working space has become a new item in the drop down. And also, Windows, Workspaces, Andrew's Working Space. So if I go back to my editing workspace, it's going to look exactly the same as Andrew's Workspace because that was the workspace I was working in before. So I would need to reset it. So if I go to Workspace, Reset Current Workspace, are you sure you want to discard the changes, reset it? Yes, I do. So that's the standard workspace as it comes in originally. But I can quickly get to Andrew's Workspace with a single click and it resets it for me there. My toolbar's in the right place. I've got my reference monitor to the fore. I can do whatever I want. I've created a new workspace. However, if I want to get rid of Andrew's workspace, um, I can get rid of it, you'd have thought, by simply clicking the drop down and going to delete workspace. But when I do that, it's not there. The reason being that you can't delete a workspace that you are currently using. So I would need to go back to my editing workspace or any other workspace and then I've got the option to go down to delete workspace. There, Andrew's workspace is now available for me to delete. So I can click Andrew's working space, click OK, and it's no longer available. I've got rid of it. So that's how you can reset and you can use different workspaces. You can even import workspaces from your project. So you can save workspaces and import them from projects. There's an awful lot you can do with workspaces. You can customize the layout to suit exactly your needs. And I would recommend that you have a play, set up the workspace exactly the way that works for you, move it around, customize it, save lots of versions and then delete the ones you don't use. Have fun. My name's Andrew Davis. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.